Okay, hi. Okay. Okay. Great, I'm glad it's all very clear. Hi everybody. So we'll make a start. So as Kate mentioned, today we're going to talk, we're going to look at some model answers and some sample answers from students and we're going to analyze um, what makes a uh, band seven. Um, so here are the contents for our webinar today. We're going to look at, we're going to look briefly at the marking criteria. So we're going to look at what the examiner is looking for when they are reading your exam answers. And we're going to look at both task one and task two. We're going to look at some examples of student answers um, while thinking about the different criteria that the examiner is looking for. And um, I'm going to ask you to analyze and give some opinions and decide what, how good you think the answers are. Um, in order to look at the answers, we're also going to look at the tasks as well. So I'm going to ask you to look at two samples of task one and two samples of task two and give me your ideas and opinions as well. Um, we're then going to talk about uh, what each, each task scored and why um, and we're going to look at the examiner's comments to see what they thought as well and then we're going to finish with any questions and answers. So let's look first of all at the marking criteria. So this is something similar to what the examiner will have when they're looking at your exam answers. So as you can see, there are four criteria, task achievement, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, which is vocabulary, and grammatical range and accuracy. For this webinar, um, we've chosen to focus on band six and seven. And the reason that we've done that is band seven, most of you or all of you will need a band seven or higher um, in the IELTS exam. But a lot of the writing that I've seen and we've been looking at um, will often score a band six or a band 6.5. And I know that quite a lot of you, if you've already taken the exam, even if you get above a band seven, in the reading or the listening or the speaking, quite often I'll hear um, stories about people getting six or 6.5 and everybody's quite curious to, to know how you can push up um, your band score to a seven. So if we look at task achievement, task achievement is how well you answer the task and how well you fulfill the requirements of the task. Now, if we look at band six, the information is the candidate addresses the requirements of the task. So this means that you do what the um, task has asked you to do, but perhaps you don't do it as clearly or as fully as you could. Um, it also states that you have presented an overview of the uh, main trends and perhaps the differences or the stages. The stages relate specifically to describing a process and uh, main trends and differences are usually for um, processes, maps and also graphs and charts. Um, and here, this last point is quite important that you clearly present and highlight the features, but your points could be more extended. So this means that perhaps you've picked out some information but perhaps you haven't made comparisons or perhaps you haven't provided enough information or specific numbers if we're talking about graphs and charts you need to give specific specific details if we compare this to the band seven for task achievement here we have covers the requirements now the difference between covers and addresses may seem quite small but actually for the IELTS examiner it's it's very important so if you address the requirements it means you've fulfilled the requirements but not 
as well as you could. If you cover the requirements, then you are um, giving enough information and uh, covering um, the main trends and differences and, high, and highlighting the differences and stages very clearly. Um, and again, if we look again, it says if you you clearly present and highlight key features, but points could be more fully extended. So this means in band seven, it means that you do extend the points. So you give details, you give specific information, you make comparisons, but the examiner um, feels that you haven't done that quite enough. So at band seven for task achievement, you need to meet all of the requirements and you need to give full details. Looking at coherence and cohesion, um, you probably um, hear this a lot from your IELTS tutors asking you how you can link your ideas and how you can link your writing. So coherence and cohesion is how does your writing fit together? Um, now, one of the uh, main parts of coherence and cohesion is making sure you have a uh, organized paragraphs and making sure you make your paragraphs clear. If we look at band six, um, we can see that the examiner, for a band six, the examiner will expect you to arrange your information and ideas coherently and there's progression. So this means that there's a logical um, logical steps to your ideas so for example you don't start with the conclusion and finish with the introduction for example so it needs to be logical um, one of the other keywords we have here are cohesive devices so cohesive devices are the linking phrases that link your ideas and really show the examiner what you want to say so if you're making a comparison your linking phrase could be however or in spite of. So these linking phrases, cohesive devices, are really important. Um, the inner band six, the examiner may expect to see um, some cohesion, but it may be faulty or mechanical. So this means that perhaps you've used the same cohesive device, perhaps you've used the same linking phrase in each paragraph and you haven't used much of a variety. The other key point in, part in band six is you may not always use referencing clearly. So referencing is using phrases like it and this and these and those. These referencing devices help you to avoid repetition. So instead of repeating the same phrase again, you can replace it with it or these or those. So here um, in band six, it means that you may not use it appropriately. You may make some mistakes. If we compare this to band seven, band seven, your ideas are logically organized. There's clear progression, so it's very easy to follow the steps and follow the ideas. And you use a wider range of cohesive devices, so using a wider range of uh, referencing phrases. For Let's Call Resource, Let's Call Resource is about the vocabulary that you're using. And if we look at band six, it um, shows us that for a band six, you'll use an adequate range of vocabulary. This means that, for example, with graphs and charts, you use vocabulary to describe changes, but you may not use much of a variety. As those of you who, who've looked at the course book will find, or any other materials, there's lots of different ways to describe change. For example, increase. You can have about three different synonyms. Increase, go up, rocket. So in band six, the examiner feels that perhaps you haven't used a wide enough range of vocabulary. Another main feature of band six is errors in spelling. So errors in spelling, um, and also choosing the wrong type of word. This comes up, I see this quite a lot for band one, which is um, using the wrong type of word. So for example, if you have increase or decrease, choosing the noun instead of the verb. In band seven, the vocabulary is much wider um, and you use synonyms. Um, there are also occasional errors in word choice. This means that you don't have many spelling mistakes, maybe one or two problems with spelling, um, and you all nearly always choose the correct word. Um, for grammatical range and accuracy, for a band 
uh, six, the examiner will expect to see a mix of complex sentences and some simple sentences. Um, and there may be some errors. So errors in agreement tends to come up quite a lot, um, or punctuation. Um, notice that it says these errors in punctuation or grammar rarely reduce communication. If you have errors in grammar that make it difficult to understand what you're writing about, then you may drop down to a band five for grammatical range and accuracy. So getting really checking your work and making sure that punctuation and grammar is clear and checked is really important for getting band seven in the exam. Um, if we notice um, in band seven, you, the examiner is looking for frequent error-free sentences. So that means very few errors in your grammatical range and accuracy. OK, so now we're going to look at an example task. So here's the task. Um, this is an example of task one. And what I would like you to do is to take a couple of minutes and I'd like you to look at the chart and have a think about what you would write. So I want you to think about a few things. I want you to notice um, what is the chart about and notice any highs and lows or differences and similarities. So I'm going to give you uh, two minutes and then once you've got some ideas, I'd like you to type them in the chat box. Okay, so that's about two minutes. So can you um, put some of your ideas in the chat box? Our chart shows changes in average house prices in five different cities. Now, what can you notice about this chart? What are some of the trends? Don't worry about uh, using correct grammatical structures or vocabulary. I'd just like to hear your ideas.
So for example, what, what's the main thing that you notice about this chart? Okay, so it's not that clear. Um, okay, opposite trends between. Oh, that's a, mm, thank you, Kate. That's a good question. So there are opposite trends between Frankfurt, London, and New York. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. So we can see that. Um, let's have a look. Frankfurt. Mm hmm. Between 1990, both Tokyo and London experience a drop below 5%. Yes, good, okay. London has the highest, highest store in percentage. Okay, yeah, good, okay, okay. And is there, that's interesting. This is a good overall Prices have increased in all five cities. Yeah. Change the effect in 2002. Okay. Okay, good. So you've um, noticed some of the, the main points, and it's a good overall overview and overall idea. What we're going to look at now is an example answer. So this is an example from a student who has answered this question in an exam. So um, I'd like you to read the task I'm going to show you. And again, I'm going to give you one to two minutes. I'd like you to read the, ta read the answer and tell me, in your opinion, overall, do you think it's a really good answer, an okay answer, a really bad ans answer? Okay. Okay. So take about one to two minutes. Okay, so reading that answer from a student, overall, what do you think? Do you think it's brilliant, good, okay, or terrible? Um, you can type your answers in the chat box. Okay, yeah, terrible, okay, why? <laughs> kind of terrible, slightly terrible, it's confusing, okay. Not so many parrot comparative words. I think it's good. Okay. Terrible and confusing. A bit terrible. Good. The ideas are broken. Okay. So it's confusing because the ideas are broken. Ah, because the vocabulary has no variety. That's an interesting point. So we've got a few points here. We've got um, it's. Okay, so we've got, it's not um, so easy to understand. Perhaps the paragraphs aren't logical. There isn't much variety of vocabulary. Perhaps there's some repetition. Um, and it gives an idea. Redundant words. So words that we don't need. Um, okay, okay.
So I've got a few more specific questions here. Some of them you've answered already. So is the report fully extended? So by fully extended, um, we mean is are the points fully developed? Does each main point have an example? And does each main point and each paragraph have specific um, comparisons and specific re references to percentages. So what do you think? Would you say it's fully extended? I think some of you have answered this already perhaps. So this is looking particularly at the task achievement section, so not fully extended. Okay. Okay. Our next question, again relating back to the marking criteria, is the report logically organized? So we have paragraphs. We can see we have one, two, three, four. We have five paragraphs. The overview is not. Okay, so we have five paragraphs. Um, so we is logical in that sense. The paragraphs are very clear. We can there's a nice space between them, so we can understand. Um, and what this also relates to coherence and cohesion. So look, yep, yeah, it's logically organised. Okay, look carefully at the linking devices. So we're looking at words that link ideas and um, show us show the examiner. Um, exactly what the student or candidate is thinking. So are there enough linking devices, do you think? None, none, yes, not enough. I think not enough might be the answer here. So there are some linking devices. If we look, we have, according to the chart, to introduce our ideas, um, we've got while here. So this is, we've got while to show a contrast. This is a nice phrase in paragraph three, as far as the next period is concerned. So this is a nice phrase to link your paragraphs um, and at the end we've got all in all so we do have a phrase to show us what the um, candidate thinks overall considering the time frame exactly so it's really good that the uh, student has written enough words this is another point that we need to think about you need to write more than 150 words in 20 minutes so they've organized their ideas and they've given clear paragraphs in 20 minutes okay the next question is related to accurate vocabulary so we've uh, mentioned vocabulary and a few of you think that perhaps they haven't this student hasn't used enough variety um, and i tend to agree agree they tend to use increase and decrease a lot when they um, could be using um, synonyms. Um, is there a variety of accurate grammatical structures? Now I would say there's the grammatical structures that this student has chosen are accurate. They haven't made many mistakes, but they also haven't included such a large variety. Okay, so there's two sides to grammatical range and accuracy, but variety and accuracy. So the uh, phrases are accurate, but there's not enough variety. So let's have a look and see what the examiner thought of this. So this is, these are the examiner comments. So I'd like you to read these examiner comments, um, see if they're similar to your own. And the next thing I'd like you to do is to decide on a band score between five and seven. What do you think this candidate scored? Okay. Okay. Let's have a look. Six point five. So, oh, 5.5. So if we look at the examiner comments, the main problem with the student's answer was the opening paragraph. They didn't rephrase the question 
well enough. They took phrases and words from the task, um, which, as, as you know, you should always rephrase. You can take maybe one or two words, um, but overall, you should rephrase. Um, there um, are some errors in punctuation. So this 6.5, um, perhaps um, they may have scored 7 for task achievement. Um, perhaps six for coherence and cohesion and lexical resource maybe seven and um, grammatical range and accuracy probably a six yes this is really a 6.5 yes as you can see we have the source here this is an example of a 6.5 and the examiner comments um, okay so that's our first task we're looking at let's look at another example so the Something else you can get in task one is a table. Um, so lots of you prepare yourselves to graph some charts, but you could also get a table. So I'd like you to take um, a minute um, and rephrase. I'd like you to take a minute and look at the next table. And the same as last time, look at the table and tell me um, something that you notice. What do you notice about the trends in this table? What do you notice about the information in the table? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, and what can you notice about any similarities or differences or highs or lows? Okay. Okay, the last two entries, okay. So what we've got in this uh, table is information about underground or metro systems. Um, that's a good point. Tokyo has the highest number of passengers. Yeah, this is very true. Um, okay, but it doesn't have the highest um, length or the the biggest system. It only has 155 kilometers. Mm. London has the longest railway system. Yep. So that's an interesting point there that Tokyo has the largest number of passengers, but London has the largest system. Okay. Okay, something to notice in here is um, the table gives us information about different locations and different um, numbers of passengers. Um, and it's not necessarily organized into um, increases and decreases here. Um, if we look, the only information we have is the date that the railway was opened. Um, so we can't really describe changes saying that the number of passengers increased over 10 years. Um, so what we can assume, we don't have the information here, but this information will be from one specific time. So perhaps in 2016, but that's not the kind of information we have here. So when you look at tables, be careful to notice if there are any changes or trends. Um, okay, let's have a look at a sample answer. So again, this is a sample answer to task one. I'd like you to read it and tell me, uh, do you think it's great, okay, or terrible?
Okay, so far we've got a good, well versed and organised. Okay, good. Good. Michael organised and good. Okay. 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 So let's look at some of our specific questions again. So, um, is the report fully extended? So you've you've answered some of this. You said there's some comparisons. Um, it's good. Um, do we have enough details? We have quite a lot of details here, um, but perhaps we don't have too many. So the report is is fully fully or almost fully extended. Is it logically organized? Now, this is an interesting point. Um, so this has been organized by, yeah, the progression was clear, good. Okay, this has been organized um, in, an, in a good way. We have clear paragraphs, we have linking phrases, um, and we have uh, linking devices as well. Um, is there an accurate range of vocabulary? So the vocabulary is mainly accurate, um, and what about the what about the variety? Do you think there's a good variety of vocabulary, or do you think there's some repetition? Unnecessary information. Okay, so perhaps there could be fewer details. Ah, repetition for the words of passenger, okay. So there is some repetition, um, but perhaps less than the last example. And our other example is there are a variety of accurate grammatical structures. So there's, what do you think? Is there a variety of grammatical structures here? Are they using the present, the past, the future? Okay, okay, so let's have a look. Um, let's look at the examiner comments. So what did the examiner? Here are the examiner comments for this answer. Okay, it's a good variety, yeah. Here are the examiner comments. So read through the examiner comments and tell me what score, what band score do you think this answer received? Do you think it was a five, a six or a seven or higher than a seven? So you all think it's better than the last one, okay? Okay, so 7.5. So this scored slightly higher than a seven. Um, so it may have scored seven in some parts and eight in other parts. So this is an example of a good answer. And this is the kind of answer that the examiners are looking for to get a seven or above a seven. Okay, okay. so let's move on to um, writing uh, part two. So part two, as you know, is an essay. Um, here are the band descriptors. So they, you're marked on the same criteria, similar criteria. So you have task response, coherence and cohesion, let's call resource and grammatical range and accuracy. Again, the difference between a six and a seven. So for task response, um, the examiner is expecting you for a seven to present a clear position. So your ideas and opinions, if it's an opinion essay, if it's an opinion essay, but your answers should be very clear throughout all of the essay. So all of the paragraphs need to be relevant. All of your topic sentences need to be relevant. The examiner is also looking for you to present, extend and support your main ideas. So the examiner will expect to see a clear topic sentence with an explanation with some examples and supporting ideas. Um, the area that may uh, be slightly uh, lower in band seven is the uh, tendency to overgeneralize. So if your examples are perhaps not too spe specific enough. For coherence and cohesion, the examiner will expect you to use logical 
Um, organize your information in a logical way. Use a range of cohesive devices correctly. So the difference between a six and a seven is in a seven, you use a range and a variety of different linking phrases. And in a six, you use um, linking phrases effectively. So not quite as large a variety as the examiner will expect to see in a seven. The paragraphs are also important, so the examiner will expect a central topic within each paragraph, so every paragraph must be relevant um, and it must be linked back to the task, the essay task. It must be very clear um, what your idea is for each paragraph. For the lexical resource, so your vocabulary, um, the examiner will be looking, <coughs> looking for a sufficient range of vocabulary that allows flexibility and precision. So flexibility and precision is using vocabulary to really explain what you mean. So there's, the examiner knows exactly what you're talking about. Sometimes um, it's difficult to understand uh, candidates or your ideas when you're writing essays. So in a band seven, the examiner won't have any trouble understanding your ideas and it will be very clear and the words that you choose will be the correct um, words as far as possible. The um, other thing the examiner is looking for is to use some less common let's call items. So um, where you have a choice of a word that we use a lot or a word that we use less, in a band seven, the examiner is looking for the words that you're less likely to use, the less common, the more unusual words. For grammatical range and accuracy, similar to task one, so it's to do with the variety of complex structures, so the variety of different structures you're using, um, and making a few, making few errors, not many. Okay, again, in band six, the, the examiner may see some errors, but in band seven, they'll see a few, but not many. So let's have a look at our uh, example task. So this is our example task. Um, some people think that a sense of competition in children should be encouraged. Others believe that children who are taught to cooperate rather than compete become more useful adults. Discuss both these views and give your opi own opinion. So as you can see this is a discussion essay so you have a clear structure for your essay. You'd have your introduction, your um, this uh, task two is, uh, there's a question here, how can you organize your thoughts in 20 minutes? Task two is 40 minutes. So for task two, we have 40 minutes. Now, um, the have a think about this. Um, just take one minute. Just have one minute and give me some of your ideas. What are some of your ideas related to this topic? Okay, so if you can type some of your ideas in the chat box. Oops, excuse me. No, technical problems, there we go. Okay, okay. Some interesting ideas about ch competitive children becoming more independent, competition being a good motivator and good motivation. That's interesting. Key point here, competition is a good motivator for some children. That's an interesting point. So there you can perhaps agree to an extent with this um, essay topic. Okay, so um, you'd need to discuss both sides of the argument and you'd also need to give your own opinion in the conclusion and make sure you give lots of examples to support your idea, ideas. So let's look at a sample answer. Okay. So 
So again, look at the sample answer. Do you think it's okay, great, or terrible? Got some different ideas here. Good intro, bad intro. Terrible. Okay. So we've got some mixed ideas. We've got some good points, some bad points. Let's look at the, um, it's a bit confusing. Okay, so this is an interesting point. It covers, no, okay, it does not follow Pete. Um, if we look at our specific questions, does this essay present a clear position? So we said it covers the positive and negative points, um, but it's a bit disorganized. But we can, reading it, we can see that they're, um, they've answered both parts of the task and they've given our opinion. So we could say that it does present a clear position. Um, is it organized in a logical way? Um, we've had some points that it's perhaps disorganized. Um, so in some parts it's organized and perhaps other parts not so organized. Um, okay, um, what about the um, vocabulary? Is there a range of vocabulary? So our topic is about competition and children. Is there a range of accurate vocabulary or is there some repetition? Repetition, too much repetition. Okay, okay. And how about the grammatical range and accuracy? Do the, does this candidate use a variety of structures, grammatical structures? Adequate only. Okay. Okay. Let's have a look at the examiner uh, comments. Quite a lot of comments for this one. So have a look at the examiner comments and um, tell me what, the grammar is limited, tell me what um, score do you think this candidate got? Five, six, seven, above a seven? Okay, six, six. Okay, so there's quite a strong consensus that this candidate got six. Let's have a look. You're right, this candidate got six. Um, one of the key points to notice with the examiner comments um, is that errors, particularly in vocabulary, errors in word choice make it sometimes difficult to understand. So if you're the words you've chosen or the structures you've chosen make it difficult for the examiner to understand, then you're not going to be able to get to seven. So it's important that everything is very clear. Okay, and we have one final essay to look at. Um, so this one is about fixed punishments for crime. So take a minute to read through and then we're going to move directly to look at the sample answer. So again, this is also a discussion essay. So you have your clear structure, you have an introduction, you discuss one view, you discuss the other view with giving examples, and then you have your conclusion. Okay, so let's look at our sample answer. Okay, one of the first things to notice is that this is a fairly long 
answer. So this is in fact over 350 words. So this is something to bear in mind in your exam that you only have 40 minutes. And as um, Ian has mentioned before, you should limit your writing to 300 words. So look at the answer and tell me what do you think? Good, great, awful, terrible, what do you think? Lovely essay, I agree, lovely essay, that's a nice word, but too long, okay. Yeah, the conclusion perhaps isn't very clear. Okay, some perhaps errors in, in word choice, so not choosing the right word. Nice one, okay, let's have a look. So our specific questions. It's very opinionated. Okay. Okay. Um, coming back to this point, it's very opinionated. It's okay to be opinionated in your essay as long as um, you present your ideas and you give clear examples and clear structures. So, does this essay present a clear position? Um, this essay is clear in their opinions, as we've mentioned, very opinionated. Um, they present, uh, we're very, it's easy to know what the, the writer thinks when we're reading this. So it presents us a clear position. Is it well organized in a logical way? We can see that there are paragraphs. Um, one thing to notice is there are a lot of paragraphs. Here's our comment. He did not group his ideas. So um, there are perhaps too many paragraphs here and they could the ideas could be organized into fewer paragraphs. Um, for vocabulary, there's some repetition. There's also quite a good variety of vocabulary related to crime. So there is some repetition, but there is also quite um, a lot of detail on different types of crimes that people might commit and perhaps punishments. Um, and a range of grammatical structures. Um, there are some errors, um, but there's also um, some interesting structures that the uh, candidates used, particularly some conditional sentences here. So here is the examiner's comments, and again, what do you think? Five, six, seven, more than a seven? 6.5. So you think it's higher than the last one, but not much higher. So the last one you mostly thought six. Okay. Okay. 7.5. So this one is a whole band score higher than the last one. Um, one thing to notice is um, one of the weak features is the paragraphs. As we looked at the, um, as we looked, there were too many paragraphs and the ideas weren't grouped together, um, which is a weak feature. But what is a positive feature is the sophisticated um, use of vocabulary. So there's a sophisticated use of vocabulary. As I mentioned, there's a wide range and most structures are accurate um, and there are some mistakes but these don't affect um, communication. Um, the one of the other reasons is it's a in terms of task achievement it's a thoughtful and well argued response so the candidate presents opposing views gives clear opinions and um, the ideas are well developed so um, the, the main problem is the paragraphing. So everything else works well, but the paragraphing was a problem. Okay, so um, we're now on to 
um, our conclusion. So the main differences between, band, we've looked at the main differences between band six and seven. Um, we, in band seven, you're, the examiner is looking for a precise range of vocabulary, a precise range of grammatical structures and fully extended and supported answers with clear logical linking. Um, some tips for answering parts uh, tasks one and two, make sure you answer all parts of the question. Some of the examples we looked at um, answered one part of the task more than the other. Um, so there was more, a much longer paragraph for one side of the argument than the other. Um, so this can affect your mark and bring it down to a 6 or a 6.5. Um, and something else which, which I say a lot is making sure you give yourself time to check your work for accuracy and variety. Um, things like punctuation or spelling or word choice can make the difference between a 6 and a 7. So make sure that you always check your work. Okay, um, so that's our presentation. Thank you. Let's go on to our questions and answers. Okay. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can uh, type them into the question or the chat box. Okay. Is it necessary? Okay, so here one of our questions is it necessary to follow a number of paragraphs, um, although details are all presented? So um, there isn't a set number of paragraphs that you must follow um, to in let's have thinking about the essay and and both tasks there isn't a set number of paragraphs that you have to follow however um, you must remember that you have 20 minutes and 20 minutes for task one and 40 minutes for task two so um, you need to make sure that you organize your ideas into logical paragraphs and that you group some of your ideas together um, and you need to make sure that your answers are clear so usually for task one you will have about four possibly five paragraphs you must have an introduction where you rephrase the task and then you have perhaps two or three main paragraphs in an essay what you usually find is you have between four and five paragraphs so an introduction a main paragraph second main paragraph perhaps a third and a conclusion so there's no set, the examiner won't be looking for a specific number of paragraphs, but the, what they'll be looking for is that your paragraphs are clear, that you have a very clear topic um, to each paragraph, um, and that it's, they're logically organized. Okay. Okay. Okay, in task one, do you, do I need to specify everything? No, in task one, the instructions are specifically um, report the main features and make comparisons where necessary. So one of the things that you'll need to do is choose the main features. What do you think is the most important um, information that needs to be included in the report? Um, for task one, um, a good starting point is to look for highs and lows, to look for differences and similarities, and also anything that is surprising. Um, so no, definitely you don't have time. In 20 minutes, you don't have time to write about everything. You can look at everything, but you don't have time to write it. Okay. Okay. What would you suggest since we're not finished writing our yet? Can I have a lecture slides? Okay, let's have a look. There was another question down here. Um, let's have a look. 
Okay, one question that's come up a couple of times is how can you gather your thoughts in 20 minutes? So for task one, you have 20 minutes. Um, so you need to be very strict with yourself. You need to give yourself a time limit to look at the task, give yourself a time limit for writing and give yourself a time limit for checking. And you need to practice. Um, that's, that's what you need to do. Okay. Um, an excellent site to practice synonyms. So an excellent site to practice synonyms, um, that's something that we can post um, on our Facebook page. We can make um, some recommendations on how a good site for practicing synonyms. What would we, what would you suggest if we run out of time for both since we are not yet finished writing our essay? So, um, Again, you need to be very strict with yourself on timing and you need to practice. You must practice um, task one and task two um, by on, under timed conditions. Um, so you must, when you're writing your essays um, and your task one for your tutors, um, make sure you have your phone or you have a clock and you time yourself very specifically um, and only give yourself 20 minutes for task one and only give yourself 20, 40 minutes for task two. Um, so you need to practice and you need to organize your time um, in order to um, write both tasks in 60 minutes. Um, it's really important that you write both task one and task two in 60 minutes. Um, if you don't write anything for task one, then you will lose a lot of marks. So you must make sure you organize your time and you practice and you write task one and task two. Um, some of our recommendations on, on the Facebook page are that you start with part task two. So task two is worth more marks. So it's um, some people, some students prefer to start with task two. Um, okay, what other questions? Okay. Okay. What else? Okay. So we need a hook. Let's see. I think we have uh, one, time for perhaps one or two more questions. Okay. Can we? Um, okay. Okay, so let's go with one more question. So one question, one, the last question we'll look at. Um, where does it go? So one question, how about if the question is positive or negative development, do we have to choose one side only and support it? So some essay questions will ask for your opinion. Um, and usually, it depends on the wording of the question, um, but if you have the, a question which is, for example, to what extent do you agree with this idea, if the phrase is to what extent do you agree, then you can either completely agree and give your reasons why or completely disagree and give your reasons why. So if it's an opinion essay and the, the rubric is to what extent do you agree or disagree, there's no reason why you can't say I completely disagree or I completely agree and write all of your reasons why. However, um, what you'll usually find is that um, unless you have very, very strong opinions, you'll usually find that um, you can give a balanced answer. So the phrase, to what extent um, do you agree or disagree, um, usually you could say, I agree to an extent um, because, and give your reasons, and then give the other, the other side. So, but the reasons that... Um, I don't agree are and then give your reasons so um, it's entirely acceptable in an opinion essay to either completely agree or disagree um, but usually you'll find that um, it's possible to give a balanced view okay um, 
if we okay so um tips for introductions and um introductions for essays um the course book that we use during our course has some great tips for you and um, so you can look at once you've got your course book and you're in your classes you can look at the course book and particularly in units one and two they've got some great recommendations of how to structure your essay and what to include in your essay um, in your introduction i'm sorry so in your introduction um there are set ways set uh uh, steps that you can follow. Um, generally, these steps are um, you should make a general comment on the essay question and a general comment on the topic. Um, you should then add an extra sentence to support your first idea. The third point you need to focus the question in your own words and then also tell the reader your plan. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, as Kate's mentioned, these are lots of great questions, so please do send them to the Facebook page um, and any to uh, Kate. And thank you very much for coming today.